Who was Queen Mary? And why is Camilla wearing her crown? Buckingham Palace recently announced that Queen Consort Camilla has selected which crown will be placed on her head at the coronation on May 6th. Her crown has been speculated about and controversial for a number of reasons. The last five queens consort had new custom-made crowns to fit their styles. But because of the cost of living crisis going on in the UK, ordering a new crown would be criticized as extravagant. Therefore, Camilla was expected to select from the antique crowns created for her predecessors, likely one of the three newest, made for Queen Alexandra, Queen Mary, or Queen Elizabeth. I ran a poll on my channel in October to find out which crown you thought Camilla would select. The 1937 crown of Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mom, was the clear winner with 36% of the vote. But Camilla surprised us all by selecting Queen Mary's Art Deco style crown from 1911. It was designed by Gerard & Co and was purchased at the Queen's personal expense. It is set with 2,200 diamonds, which were recycled from other jewelry in the royal family's collection. The crown was designed with eight half arches instead of the usual four. This is a sensible choice for Camilla for several reasons. Elizabeth Bowes Lyon, the Queen Mum, was an iconic figure, and she died relatively recently in 2002. Her crown was displayed on her coffin and is strongly associated with her. Queen Mary died back in 1953, so her crown has more freedom to be associated with future queens. Of the three choices, Mary's is the most fitting to Camilla's style. At 5'8", Camilla is quite tall compared to consorts of the past. Of the small, dainty tiaras in the royal collection, she tends to wear larger ones which better suit her stature. The queen mum was just 5'2", and her crown was small, so it might have looked like a miniature on Camilla's head. Queen Mary was likewise tall for her time at 5'7", and her 9.8-inch crown is the tallest in the collection. As Catherine, Princess of Wales, is 5'9", this crown may be a good choice for her as well when the time comes. In fact, Queen Mary hoped that hers would become the official consort crown and would be worn by future queens. She may yet get her wish. Her elegantly designed Art Deco crown is exceedingly beautiful, and with gaps between the stones, it is not overly fussy. I particularly like the scrolled arches. But the crown controversy doesn't end there. All three of the antiques Camilla might have chosen from were designed to contain the problematic Koh-i-Noor diamond front and center. This 105 carat stone is highly controversial because it was stolen from a 10-year-old Indian monarch, Dulip Singh, and presented to Queen Victoria in 1849. Since then, the governments of India, Pakistan, and Afghanistan have all requested its return and warned that the royal family's continued use of the stone is a painful reminder of the colonial past. Queen Mary's crown holds two other, less controversial giant gems, Cullinan's three and four, which were cut from the largest diamond ever mined. Also called the Great Star of Africa, this 3,106 carat or 1.36 pound stone was discovered in South Africa in 1905 and presented by the Transvaal government to Edward VII in 1907. Once the stone was cut by an expert jeweler, the largest of its pieces, Cullinan I, was set into the sovereign's scepter and Cullinan II into the imperial state crown. They belong to the Crown Jewel Collection, while the seven smaller, a number of minor brilliance and unpolished fragments cut from the Cullinan were owned personally by Queen Mary. She wore her crown at the coronation of her son, George VI, in 1937, but she had to do without the Koh-i-Noor because it was in the crown of the new Queen Consort, Elizabeth. Mary wore her crown without the arches and mantle, and she added in the Cullinan 5 and shuffled the stones around to fill the Koh-i-Noor sized gap. 
the recent palace announcement about Camilla's crown choice carefully avoided mention of the Koh-i-Noor, but it did detail that the crown would be refurbished. It will only feature four of the half arches and Cullinan's three, four, and five will be added in. So it seems likely that we will see Queen Mary's crown placed on Camilla's head without the controversial Koh-i-Noor. Queen Mary may not be as well remembered as her daughter-in-law, but she was a strong force within the British royal family and greatly influenced the morality and sense of duty her favorite granddaughter, Elizabeth II, was famous for. The royal family have Mary to thank for the acquisition and preservation of several important pieces of art, antiques, and especially jewelry. But the queen's magpie collecting gained her a false reputation as a kleptomaniac. Let's get to know this important British queen consort. Mary of Tech was the daughter of Francis, the Duke of Tech in Germany and Princess Mary Adelaide of Cambridge, a granddaughter of King George III of the UK. Thus, Mary was a first cousin of Queen Victoria. Victoria and Mary were born in the same room in Kensington Palace, 48 years apart. Mary, called May after the month of her birth, grew up playing with the royal children. But as her family was far less wealthy, they also spent a good deal of time living in Italy and Germany, where it was less expensive. Mary loved visiting art galleries. She was highly cultured and fluent in German and French. In 1886, 19-year-old Mary returned to London for her debutante season and introduction into high society. As the only unmarried British princess who was not descended from Queen Victoria, she was seen as an excellent bride for her former playmate, the Prince of Wales's eldest son, Albert Victor. Queen Victoria was very fond of her cousin and admired her strong character and sense of duty. At his grandmother's persuasion, Albert Victor popped the question and Mary agreed. But six weeks later, Prince Albert Victor died in an influenza pandemic. The family saw no point passing up on an excellent royal bride. So when Albert Victor's younger brother George took his place in the line of succession, he also took his place at the altar. The newlyweds grew to love each other very deeply. George was a rather boring man, but he was devoted to his wife, wrote to her every day they were apart, and never took a mistress. They had six children together. Edward, known as David within the family, Albert, called Bertie, Mary, Henry, George, and John. I have two videos profiling all six of the scandalous royal siblings, which I will link in the description. The children were left in the care of a nanny, as was customary at the time, but George and Mary failed to notice that the nanny was abusing the children by pinching them, denying them food, and using other harsh measures of discipline. George himself had been in the Navy from the age of 12 and was a stern disciplinarian. Mary offered comfort to her children when they suffered her husband's strict censure. Their eldest son, Edward, wrote fondly of his mother in his published memoirs but a private letter to his wife upon his mother's death may be more revealing of her true nature. My sadness was mixed with incredulity that any mother could have been so hard and cruel and yet so demanding. I'm afraid the fluids in her veins have always been as icy cold as they are now in death. Mary devoted her time to royal duty. With 20th century innovations in transportation, like trains and steamliners, the couple did far more traveling than any previous royals. They toured Gibraltar, Malta, Egypt, Ceylon, Singapore, Australia, New Zealand, Mauritius, South Africa, and Canada, all in a single eight-month tour. They also paid visits to other royals for important occasions, including the wedding of King Alfonso VIII of Spain to their cousin, Victoria Eugenie of Battenberg, and the coronation of King Hakon VII of Norway and his wife, George's sister, Queen Maud. In 1910, Edward VII died, and George and Mary were themselves crowned king and queen. 
When World War I broke out in 1914, Mary rationed food at the palace and visited wounded soldiers. With anti-German sentiment running high, King George made the decision to change the name of the royal dynasty from Saxe, Coburg, and Gotha to that of his favorite English castle, Windsor, and thus it remains to this day. In 1917, women in Britain won the vote. In 1919, her youngest son, John, who had long suffered from ill health, including epilepsy, died at the age of 13. His mother wrote to a friend, I cannot say how grateful we feel to God for having taken him in such a peaceful way. He just slept quietly into his heavenly home. No pain, no struggle, just peace for the poor, little, troubled spirit. Ireland waged a war of independence against Britain, and in 1922, peace was declared with the establishment of the Irish Free State. Northern Ireland opted to remain with Britain, so the nation became the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. In the final years of his life, King George became increasingly ill with lung problems, exacerbated by his heavy smoking, and the Queen took particular care of him. He died in 1936 at the age of 70, and their eldest son became King Edward VIII. Edward had long been a notorious playboy and had resisted matrimony. The 42-year-old king now had his heart set on marrying a twice-divorced American, Wallace Simpson. The court, government, Dowager Queen Mary, and the people were all scandalized. Mary in particular disapproved of divorce, which was against the teachings of the Anglican Church, of which Edward was now titular head. She believed Wallace unsuitable to be the wife of the king. The prime minister advised Edward that he could not marry Wallace and remain monarch, so he chose Wallace and abdicated the crown. Mary never forgave her son for giving up his duty, and she threw her support behind her second son, who was crowned King George VI. She was far more involved with the upbringing of her granddaughters, the future Queen Elizabeth II and Princess Margaret, than she had been with that of her own children. During World War II, King George worked tirelessly to keep up the country's morale, and his younger siblings, Mary, Henry, and George, all risked their lives to serve the war effort. Prince George died in a somewhat mysterious plane crash in 1942 at the age of 39. Queen Mary was evacuated to the countryside, where she and her large staff took over Badminton House, the country estate of her niece, Mary Duchess of Beaufort. Since childhood, Queen Mary had held a great appreciation for art. In her later years, she became enthusiastic about collecting art and antiques, especially those that had a connection to the royal family, or had been part of the royal collection and had been given away as gifts. She became rather notorious for noticing beautiful things in other people's houses and strongly insinuating that she would like to receive them as gifts. And who could refuse a queen? As antique dealers' bills went unpaid and lords and ladies hid their best antiques ahead of a royal visit, the rumor spread that Queen Mary was a kleptomaniac. In 1952, George VI died at 56. The death of her third child greatly affected the 85-year-old dowager. She left strict instructions that if she herself should die, mourning would not interfere with the coronation of her beloved granddaughter. Queen Mary passed away in her sleep on March 24, 1953. Her coffin laid in state at Westminster Hall, where a large number of mourners filed past. She is buried beside her husband in the nave of St. George's Chapel, Windsor Castle. Ten weeks later, on June 2nd, Elizabeth II was crowned queen. She inherited most of her grandmother's jewelry, including the Cullinan Stones. They have now been bequeathed to her son and are free to be used by his wife, Queen Consort Camilla. 
Want even more tea on history? Check out the History Tea Time podcast, available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Google Podcasts. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, comment your thoughts, and check out my other royal history videos. If you really want to help, please consider supporting me on Patreon. A link is in the description. Thank you for watching.